Okay, it's time to learn about top coats. So you've already learned about clear wax, and now we're gonna talk about some of the other top coat options that are available, when you would use them, why you would use them, and how you would use them. So before I go into the more durable top coats, I do wanna to touch on this one, hemp oil. So uh, hemp oil is really a fabulous top coat over chalk style paint. It's 100% natural. Um, and it acts kind of like the wax in that it provides a light durability factor. It's even food safe. So if you're really concerned about 100% natural, um, maybe in a baby's room, or if you're sensitive to chemicals, or for whatever reason that concerns you, think about this 100% natural um, hemp oil as uh, you would apply it very much like you, like I applied the wax. Okay, it is an oil and um, it goes on really quickly and easily. It does have a scent that sticks around for a little while. Eventually it goes away. Okay, so top coats. Now we're into the high durability top coat um, area. <laughs> when we need or want more durability than the wax offers, we look beyond the wax. For instance, this is a table, right? And you know, it's a little table. It's kind of a little end table magazine wrap type of thing. Um, you know, I could see people putting stuff on it, right? Putting stuff on it. So the top of this, I did not wax because I want to use something more durable. So choose. As a beginner, I want to say choose between wax and a more durable top coat on each surface. Don't try to put wax and top coat, top coat and wax. There are times you can do that. I don't want you to get confused by that. So as a beginner, we waxed this on down, right? So that's fine. The top, I didn't put any wax on, is clean. And we're gonna use a different top coat on that. So the kinds of top coats. So obviously I'm a Dixie Belle fan and I'm a huge fan of their top coats, okay? There are zillions of top coats out on the market under names like polycrylic, um, min wax, I mean polycrylic is a type. Min wax, there's so many at the hardware store and I'm just gonna say I've never liked any of them that I've tried until Dixie Bell's top coat. So clear coat. This is a clear coat. It comes in satin, flat, which flat and matte are the same thing, no sheen, and it also comes in a gloss, okay? These always, all have to be shaken. Um, this is a Great foolproof top coat, okay, for durability. Um, Dixieville also makes one called Gator Hide. This is their toughest top coat, and it's called Gator Hide because you think of the, the skin of an alligator being real tough, right? So this is their most durable, toughest top coat. This is fabulous. There's just one little downfall. If you use it on dark colors, sometimes it can streak a little, and some people are struggling with that. So I'm gonna show you how we get, how we get past that so that we can use this product. Then there's you know, all these other finishes, all these other types. I wanna mention though that, like for instance, general finishes. I use these um, primarily on my stain surfaces, but I've started using this on painted surfaces. These are oil-based, okay? So what you wanna be careful of, because our paint is water-based, is the paint, the piece needs to dry at least three days before you use any oil-based top coat over a water-based paint. So remember, think of it like this, oil and water don't mix, right? So you can use oil-based top coats over water-based paint if you wait three to four days to let it really dry first, okay? So that's kind of tricky. As a beginner, I would suggest just starting with this, okay? Clear coat and satin, it's kind of, Foolproof. Okay. All right. So um, there are a couple different ways you can apply your top coat, and my preferred method is the applicator sponge. Um, you can absolutely use a brush, and I'll, I'll show you that too. So for this piece, I'm going to use the uh, clear coat in the satin finish because the satin finish is going to match the. Um, the light sheen that I chose for my wax. So I've shaken it pretty well, right? And open it up. Kind of thick. I'm gonna pour a little bit on my sponge. 
It's not always quite that thick. I might have not had the cap on super tight, but it's fine. But you might find yours to be a little bit thinner. And then I'm going to start in the back of this piece. I always like to start at the back for some reason. I don't know. It's just my process. And I'm going to swipe on a couple swoops. I'm also going to get the back side and the edges while I'm at it. Now here's what you want to be careful about with any top coat uh, such as this. And this is different from wax. You don't want to overwork the product. In other words, you don't want to keep wiping and wiping and wiping and wiping. Now I've wiped about six or seven swoops. That's enough. You want to stop there. I've got all the lumps out <laughs> and it looks good. It's got good coverage. And so I'm going to move on to the next section. If you keep rubbing it, you're going to give it, you're going to create a texture that you are not going to like. If you miss a spot, like even here is not great. I'm going to get that in the second coat, okay? So if you miss a spot, rather than trying to go over it, which is going to create a texture, um, move on and then you will get that in your second coat, okay? So again, I'm going to just pour some right on my sponge, about that much. And this is another one where you don't want, you want to be sure to use enough product. You don't want to try to stretch it out. That doesn't work, okay? Obviously you don't want to saturate it, but find a happy medium. Just don't try to stretch out the product, okay? So let's see, I guess I'll switch to my left hand. This ought to be fun. So that's actually quite a bit there. I'm going to get the whole top and sides here. And then I'm going to come back around and work it, not work it in, but just blend it. You know, I'm not pushing hard. I'm just kind of blending it in there and hitting the sides again. Go like one more swoop in each row. And then I'm going to step away from it because I don't want to overwork the product. Okay. So there we go. Now I always put at least two coats on the tops of anything like this. If someone's going to be setting something on it, no matter what it is, I want at least two coats of, of top coat on top. Now, you have to wait until it's good and dry. Um, the dry time depends on the product that you're using, so read your label. That's my best advice. Um, in my experience, it just depends on the top coat. Oil-based top coats take longer to dry, but these I can usually reapply again within like an hour. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did to the top, and that will be my second coat. And I'm going to call that good. If you want to do three coats, four coats, you certainly can. I'm going to move this piece aside. It was the first one we started with. We cleaned it. Um, but my painting video didn't come out very good, so I wanted to redo it, and that's why I switched to that piece. But what I did was I actually finished this one all the way through with the um, Dixie Bell Gator Hide. But now what I'm going to do is show you putting on a second coat. So here's the gator hide. Now, you may remember I mentioned that gator hide can tend to streak a little bit on dark pieces. So the trick for that is add in a tiny little bit of paint, your, your paint color. So I'm going to pour some of the Dixie Hide, or <laughs> gator hide on a plate. Okay. Whoops. I'm making a mess. And then I'm going to open my jar of paint. And just put in a little bit on a spoon, not very much, just so it's like a little bit. And then I'm just going to mix it all in. It's, it's just going to lightly tint the gator hide, and that just helps reduce streaking on dark colors, okay? You don't need to do that on light colors. You don't need to do it at all. It's just a tip, okay? That seems to help a lot of people. So I've lightly tinted the gator hide. Now I'll show you the brush since we haven't done that yet. You can use a brush to apply your top coat. I don't because I love the sponge, um, but you can just simply brush it on just lightly. Just don't get it too heavy. Okay. Here's a good place to kind of just work in through the details. So this is where a brush actually comes in handy if you want to get inside those little details. Um, just uh, We're not going to wipe this one off with a towel ordinarily. 
So we're just going to use the brush to kind of wipe off any excess. And you want to make sure there's no drips and runs. There's a drip in the paint there. I'm trying to get it, but it's not, it's too late, it's dried. Okay, so that's how you can use a brush. And don't over brush it, just kind of make sure there's no globs. And then move on. Ooh, oh, I'm spilling this all over the floor. Fabulous. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna take my sponge that I used on the other one, and um, I'm just gonna dip it right in this plate and get in a good amount of the goopy stuff. And I'm gonna hit the top of this uh, piece with it. It's, it's kind of barely detectable. It's just wet, as you can see. Um, and this is the second coat, so it's going on even more smoothly than the first coat did because it's not going onto raw paint. It's going onto a little bit smoother surface that's already been sealed one time. So again, like about the amount that I'm working it is it. Once you've got it smoothed out and there's no globs, then stop, okay? Or you will overwork your product. So it should be nice and smooth, damp, and that is your second So coat. Um, I'm just kinda swooping the remaining product on here and getting in here on the shelf. It's so easy, you guys. Do you see how easy this is? The, again, the key tip is just not to overwork it. Work it on, you know, make sure you have the full coverage, and then uh, step away and just let it dry. I think that's gonna do it. So, that's gonna take a little while to dry. So when I say a little while, you really don't wanna to touch or move this piece, unlike with the wax piece, which you can't really hurt it if you touch it and move it. This one, you don't want fingerprints on it. It's delicate, you wanna leave it alone, let it dry for at least you know an hour or two before you even remotely touch it, okay? Um, and then even then, you wanna be careful and give it some time to dry and cure. Um, before you start putting stuff on top of it. Give it at least a couple days. I mean, I tell my clients, try to give it at least a week before you put stuff on top of it, but that's kind of hard to do because you want to decorate it. Um, but as, whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it for other people, uh, you know, give it a few days to dry and know that it's gonna take a, a few weeks to fully cure and become really hard and reach its maximal, maximum durability level, all right? But anyway, super easy, you guys. You totally got this. I definitely recommend the sponge. Um, don't overwork the product, and I know you're gonna just have great success. See you soon.